Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar about data loggers for HACCP compliance. My name is Meredith Orbeck, and I'm the marketing manager here at MagTech, and I'm joined today by Matt Rivero. Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Matt Rivero. I'm a technical sales specialist here with MagTech, and uh, I'm uh, responsible for food processing uh, market. Great, so a few housekeeping things before we get started. If you look to the right of your screen, there is a questions module where you can enter any questions that you have for us. We will have a little bit of time at the end of the webinar to take some live questions. There's also a poll that will ask um, if your HACCP plan currently includes a temperature requirements. So if you could just fill that out quickly for us. Um, and while we wait for some answers on that, Matt, if you want to just give us a brief overview of what we're going to discuss today. Well, basically, a HACCP plan, and why we ask the question, uh, will often in food require temperature monitoring of some sort. Uh, FSMA regulations, Food Safety Modernization Act, has certain requirements, uh, not only for taking the temperature, but recording and keeping, and, and the record keeping involved in maintaining those temperatures. So, uh, obviously, you need the right tools to do a good job of uh, monitoring those temperatures, and that's where data loggers come in. Great, so we have some poll results. It looks like about 75% of respondents do have temperature in their HACCP plan, which is great to hear. Yeah. Um, so from here, we'll jump right into our slides. We'll start with talking about the safe internal temperatures for food processing. Yeah, I'm actually not surprised that 75% have it because basically everything is temperature sensitive in terms of food, whether, I mean, even, even um, you know, vegetables, those kind of produce kind of things have to be stored at certain temperatures. But uh, under circumstances where you're trying to cook something, there are obviously minimum internal temperatures that need to be uh, reached. It's, it's what's referred to as a kill step in order to kill uh, bacteria within uh, a food process. Generally, it's something like 165 degrees F for 15 seconds. But depending on the products and the situations, uh, uh, you know, you're going to have to check to make sure you've got the, the right standards within your HACCP plan. Uh, and, that, and that's what's critical. And then the other temperature requirements are, you know, like a cook chill when it comes out of an oven, you've got two hours to get it below 41 degrees or 90 minutes to get it below 41 degrees into a cooler kind of a thing to get out of the danger range in terms of temperature where bacteria can grow. And in order to have a record of these temperatures, we need software to Absolutely. go along with the data loggers? Absolutely. The, 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 the data is the important element. Uh, the data loggers are the tools you use, but the data is what uh, not only tells you what uh, your process is doing in terms of your products, but also is, is what's required for record keeping for FDA and FSMA and HACCP uh, requirements. And uh, uh, whereas a lot of people use just a handheld thermometer and write records down on a, on a clipboard, Obviously, when you've got a digital tool, you're going to be using software to, to capture and, uh, and record the data in uh, report format that can be used later. And I think it's interesting um, on our slide that we have that um, FSMA and the FDA can come in and perform inspections without any cause. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this is, uh, you know, transparency that uh, FDA, in fact, many of the food processing facilities that I visit, there is a special parking spot right by the entrance that says FDA inspector written right on it. They can show up unannounced, they can walk in, they can ask for any of your records and that record keep is important. And of course, you know, they're on, we're all on the same side of trying to make sure that the food supply is safe. But uh, obviously the, you, you need to have your record keeping in order, you've got to have good information and the FDA can check you at any moment. So in order to have those records and have the software that keeps the records, um, you do need data loggers, and there's sort of two options for data loggers, is that right? Yeah, well, it, it's, uh, data loggers will be the right tools for certain uh, process situations where you need to capture data. You can have a batch operation, which is easy enough to describe as, let's say you take a turkey and you put it in the oven for Thanksgiving, and then it's a limited time frame. You check the temperature going in, you monitor the temperature throughout the cooking process, and then when the, the cooking time is over, you take the product out, and it's, a, and it's a defined time period. Versus continuous, which is like, uh, what's your cooler temperature and what's your freezer temperature? So you can monitor that temperature continuously for pretty much as long as you're going to be in business. It can be years and years. 
Hmm. So there's the two. Sure. Um, so with batch monitoring, we do have some specific data loggers. Yes. For those. Yes. Uh, batch monitoring again. You're trying to check internal temperature of the product. Uh, there are two different options for gathering the data during a batch. One is to run through the process and at the end of the process you download the data into your computer. Uh, it is a conventional kind of style and the, the high temp 140 is something like that. that you, this will run through your process and at the end you put it into a, an interface and download the data onto your computer in, in uh, a single file. The other is to use something wireless that will feed the data to you uh, wirelessly in real time so you can monitor uh, the internal temperatures as it's happening and the data comes to your computer continuously throughout that process. I think one interesting point on this slide um, is that the data can be used for process improvement. So in addition to having those records available for the FDA or the inspectors that are coming, you can also use it internally to improve a absolutely. your own processes. That's, that's uh, uh, critically important. Obviously, maintaining certain minimums for the FDA is kind of like the bare minimum for data logging, but obviously, um, Product quality is important uh, beyond product safety. And you may find that we monitor this process and if we leave it in two minutes longer, the temperatures do something different, the product gets better or the product gets worse. And, and you can use that data to fine tune your process to make uh, the best product quality and also to improve your throughput. You can put stuff through faster so you increase your, your quantities. Really interesting. So now flipping over to the other side for continuous monitoring. Again, continuous monitoring is more for where products are being stored, or at least they're stationary for a while. Um, uh, like coolers and freezers, uh, and sometimes just warehouses, both for ingredients and for finished products, should all be logged. The temperature should always be logged for those areas. And, uh, and that data is not batch, it's not uh, a finite time frame. That is continuous um, for pretty much as long as you're gonna be running your freezer. So it almost seems like batch monitoring is short term and continuous is longer term. Absolutely. And actually the best way to do this is that you continuously monitor each process step. So I wanna know what the oven temperature is all the time. I wanna know what the cooler temperature is all the time. I wanna know what the freezer temperature is. And then you take a batch data logger like this and put it into the product and then you send the product through the oven, through the cooked shell process, into the freezer and the data that comes off that batch will tell you how the internal product temperature is responding to your oven which is at this temperature in your, in your cooler. So you kind of use both of those to control the process. Um, let's move on to this little chart that you created. Yes, um, basically uh, the, the two types of, of data logging are those batch uh, finite time periods and continuous for storage. And then the way you capture the data is either wirelessly, continuously in real time, or conventionally where you go to the data logger, plug it into a computer and download the data. And you can do either one. Uh, either type of data collection for either batch processing or continuously monitoring. For example, we have these wireless temperature monitors that send data on a, on a real-time basis and these can be used in a cooler or a freezer so that nobody ever has to go into the freezer and connect to a data logger or pull the data logger out, that this just stays there running, sending data to your computer and you have the file there all the time. Or you can use uh, one of these small, simple data loggers that are conventional, and you plug it in, or you, you put it in your uh, freezer, you go in every so often, you plug a cable in, and you download the data for today or whatever, and you get your data that way. Really interesting. And we'll just end here with a quote that you picked out. Oh, my, uh -huh. I'm a huge um, 
Deming's fan. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he's the father of statistical process control, and he's the one that taught the Japanese how to manufacture things so great in the 70s. And basically his sa saying is that without data, you're just another person with an opinion, which means real data gives you real facts. And in order to get that data, you really do need data loggers. Yes. Yep. You need the right tools. Great. Um, so again, if you do have any questions, please fill them out on the right-hand side. We have gotten a few questions already, so we'll jump into those sure. if you're ready. Um, do you need both batch and continuous monitoring? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, of course, your own mileage may vary depending on what you're doing, but they're the two different types of tools. As I explained before, you'd, you love to have the continuous monitoring over each of your process steps. One of the great examples I love to go to is I worked with a, a frozen fish company that was making fryer patties and they had a 40 foot long conveyor fryer. And what was happening is they were dropping frozen fish in one end of it and that would draw the temperature down uh, to an unmanageable point and then the, the fish would, they, it would heat up again by the time it reached the other end of the 40 foot oven. So you couldn't figure that out unless you were monitoring temperature in multiple points continuously within the oven and putting a data logger within the product and allow the product to flow through that 40 foot oven. And so because of that data they were able to adjust uh, their process absolutely. to make sure Absolutely. There were multiple oil. burners and they had to turn the first burner up higher than the rest of them to offset the frozen food drawdown in temperature. And then the rest of the, uh, the boilers were set up to just maintain cooking temperature. Great. Um, another question that we just got, um, what are the advantages of using a data logger over a strip chart recorder? Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> uh, strip chart recorders, I, I, I visit food processing plants all the time and pretty much every one of them still has strip chart recorders on the, on the wall. Uh, strip chart recorders were invented in the late 1800s. It's old technology. They work fine. But what you end up with is a little graph on what looks like a paper plate. Uh, showing what the temperatures are and what most people do is they'll take that out, put the new one in and the old one goes into a, a file cabinet drawer and the data never gets used. It's logging you know for minimum requirements so the FDA, it meets the FDA guidelines but almost nobody uses that data. It doesn't get extracted from the piece of paper and put into a computer into a spreadsheet where you can start to do an analysis of how are things happening. Uh, the advantage with digital data, especially wireless, is it's right there on your computer and uh, your process engineers and your plant managers and those can sit down and start playing with the numbers and fine tune your process and, and more often than not it saves more money than the cost of the tools. Sure. Um, sort of on the same note, we just got a question, how do you prove that you looked at the data and it's not just going into that drawer, um, like you said, with the strip chart recorders. Well, well with the strip chart recorders, you know, uh, who's to say? You don't know. It mm -hmm. goes in there. With uh, digital data and our software, the big advantage is that we can set uh, alarms and alerts so that if something goes outside of a predetermined range that the user controls, um, it's not only flagged in the software, but it can send an email or a text to let somebody know in real time that, that there's a problem and uh, you know, require corrective actions as part of your HACCP plan and all that um, that goes along with it. So that proves that you are watching the data, even if it's the computer that's doing it and only flagging you with it is an exception. So we have time for about one more question. Sure. Um, this last one, what is the cost benefit of data loggers? Again, um, obviously somebody running around with a thermometer and a clipboard appears to be cheap. But there's labor costs not only in the person running around, but then somebody's taking that clipboard and doing some data entry to create the reports. There's transcription errors and the like. Uh, so even though the tools may be a couple hundred dollars to it may be as much as a thousand dollars for the tool, um, the labor saving, um, the the fact that the data is better, uh, FDA inspectors love to look at. You know, it's like oh, you guys are doing a professional job of of data collection. Um, and then, as I described, the opportunity for process improvement because the data is more useful, um, uh, the payback on some of these tools are, are sometimes months 
and there and for years there are big advantages going ahead sure and just to jump off that we did get one more quick question sure. about um, calibration so as an ongoing maintenance sure we we sell the product calibrated and I think everything we sell now has a NIST certificate or uh, because of the ISO 17025 yes yes some loggers are accredited to ISO 17025 okay. um, we recommend that you get them recalibrated annually here at the factory. A lot of these have batteries in them. Uh, our, we have great relationships with our customer. You send them back once a year. We m double check them, everything. We fix everything, put new batteries in, recalibrate, and it basically goes back to you as a new tool. Um, if your HACCP plan requires calibration more often, uh, there are methods for doing uh, calibration by comparison using an ice slurry and, and other thermometers. Um, that's part of what's designed into the data logger is the understanding that the calibration and certification needs to be kept up. And the calibration, if a customer did want to do calibration by themselves, they can do it right from the software. Absolutely. There's, very helpful. Yeah, the software has, has uh, processes in it as well. Great. So we didn't get to all of the questions today, but if you did have a question that was not answered, Matt will be reaching out Absolutely. today um, and is available always by email or phone if you have any additional questions. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that this was a helpful webinar. If um, you would mind filling out the poll at the end um, to tell us how you enjoyed this webinar, if it was helpful, and if you would attend another one. And we hope to see you again. Yeah, whatever topics you'd like to see for upcoming webinars would be interesting as well. Thank you.